Last chance for the Steelers. Bradshaw trying to get away. And his pass is broken up by Tatum. Tipped off. Rachel Harris has it. And he's over. Look. Rachel Harris. Grab the ball on the deflection. Five seconds to go. He grabbed it with five seconds to go and scores. Let's watch one this again. One million to one odds on this one. Watch this. Ricochet. Ricochet out there off of Jack Tatum and into the man of the year, Franco Harris's hands. When you talk about Christmas miracles, here's the miracle of all miracles. Watch this one now. Bradshaw's lucky to even get rid of the ball. He shoots it out. Jack Tatum deflects it right into the hands of Harris. And he sets off, and the big 230-pound rookie slipped away from Warren and scored. The immaculate reception. Fourth and 10. 22 seconds left. No timeouts. The Immaculate Reception. I was seven years old. Fifty years in two days, it will be. The anniversary of that play. Two days they were going to retire, and I'm surprised that the number 32 had not already been retired by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Doesn't matter if you were a Steeler fan or not, you had to respect the Steelers for what they did during the 70s. I hated them, beating my Cowboys twice in the Super Bowl, <sighs> but they were greatness. I was fortunate enough, man, I'm gonna say <laughs> Franco Harris was one of the nicest people that you would ever meet in your life and a person who looked out for others throughout his life. I was blessed enough because my wife working for United Way that he was a United Way spokesman, one of the originals back in the 70s, and was working with him the same year, 2012, that I actually met Roger Staubach. In fact, Roger Staubach and Franco Harris were doing a PSA together um, at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And meeting him and meeting Roger was life-changing. Franco Harris at 72 has passed away. And the Cowboys versus the Steelers, so many of those great players have gone and probably will be going in the next few years. I challenge you guys because football was a lot different than what it is today. Now guys make business decisions when they go on a play. They're friends in the off seasons and they work out and it's big business. But back in the day, football was more about your team, your buddies, your comrades in arms. It was more for the love of the sport because football wasn't enough money for you to survive on year round. You had other jobs that you actually had to do. You were an oil guy slash football player. You were a cement guy slash football player. And Franco Harris was definitely one of the greatest out there. And he will truly be missed. I, I couldn't believe when I woke up this morning and I saw it trending in Twitter and having Brian Green and Stacy Schubert and others texting me and saying the same thing. We're not Steeler fans, but we all recognize the greatness that was Franco Harris. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods here 
on this sad, sad hump day. This is a short week for our Cowboys. We don't have much time to get ready for the Philadelphia Eagles, and we have no idea what the team's, philosoph- team's philosophies will be. The Eagles at 13-1 and one have run away with the division, have run away with home field advantage, and now have Jalen Hurts hurting, who, um, regardless of Nick Sirianni, saying that, you know, he's got a chance to play this weekend. I can't see the Eagles playing him in a game that really, this game is more about pride than anything else. Um, This is about bragging rights. Um, For the Cowboys and Eagles, I want to say there's only been three quarterbacks of the Eagles that have ever swept the Cowboys. And if Jalen Hurts doesn't play, then... That record goes on. (sighs) For the Cowboys, what this game means to me, or at least my thoughts are, is getting back to right. People, like many, many times this season, have written off the Cowboys and said they're done. They're over with. From the time we lost Thomas Smith to the time we lost Dak Prescott, and after that first game, how bad we looked after the Green Bay Packer game. But the team has been resilient and has had a way to turn around. I'm going to dare say that I believe the Cowboys rise to the occasion of the competition, and they also fall to the level of the competition. I believe they believe the hype sometimes and overlook teams that they shouldn't. But make no mistake about it, I think the Cowboys, as well as the Eagles, both, have been looking forward to this game. And so regardless of who is on the field, if the Cowboys decide we got to look at this as in getting guys healthy for the playoffs or not, I believe you're still going to see a war between the two of them. The Eagles don't like us. We don't like them. We may respect each other, but we don't want to lose to the other. Let's listen in this morning to uh, get up on their thoughts on should Jalen Hurts sit this week. He's got a shoulder. They have a comfortable lead. That is still the defense as unspectacular as they've been that gets after the quarterback. Even if the doctors say he can play, should he this weekend? I don't think he should. There really feels like no like pressure to play. To get the number one seed, they could win one of these other games going forward. Beating the Saints will be great for them because they have the Saints pick. That mm-hmm. makes their draft pick even a little bit better. So mm-hmm. that's the game that you should bring him back for. But I'm not as much concerned about how Jalen Hurts is going to feel or perform because quarterbacks can come back off a separated shoulder. We saw that he could continue to throw the ball in this game off mm-hmm. a separated shoulder. What I'm concerned about, or excuse me, a, a sprained shoulder. What I'm concerned about is what that does to their game plan. Which made them so special offensively is that they can have a quarterback run centric offense one week, then a deep pass centric offense the next week, then short passes the week after that. But now we're taking a key ingredient off the table. They're not going to be likely to call a lot of quarterback runs. It makes them a lot easier to defend, and it's going to make it a lot more difficult for Jalen Hurts and this whole team. Like, it makes it easier for Miles Sanders when um, Jalen Hurts is running. It makes it easier for the receivers to be more likely to get um, favorable matchups when uh, the defense has to account for Jalen Hurts' running ability. So it's going to hurt them uh, going forward, whether he feels great or not. Just the idea of limiting limiting their uh, – opportunities or their strategies going forward. So I definitely do not think he should play this week. Um, but the Eagles are 13-1. and one. But a more important number to me is 34. That's the amount of time. If we don't see Jalen Hurts on the field and th- we assume they're going to get the first round out, that's the amount of time that would elapse if with him not on the field. Mm-hmm. I feel like that is too long of a window for him to not be on the field. I hear you on he can take time off and still come back and be fine. But with this offense, with this team, I think it's important that we at least see Jalen yeah. on the field before the playoffs start. What do you think, Nate? Yeah, I really think that they should make sure they sit him down for this game, mm-hmm. particularly this this game. But there's a sprain is so subjective. Yeah. You know, what, what type of sprain and is it is it what is the the degree of separation? Basically, and I'm not talking six de- degrees of right. separation. Mm-hmm. I'm talking you know <laughs> what, what is the actual issue here? Is it the rotator cuff? Is it your labrum? Is it just a bruise? And all those things on your recovery, if you're especially your throw, throwing shoulder, 
What, at what point does a hit or landing on the ground, if your arm's mm -hmm. trapped, does that affect you mm -hmm. in the playoffs? So you have to really be careful here. Tread water. Make sure that you get through this season. Hold on to that number one seed and don't give it up. But I don't think he'll be out the rest of the season. And if that's the case, like, like Kim's saying, I think that that could throw a little uh, a chink right there in, in the armor as far as you get into the playoffs. You don't play the rest of the season. Could be a problem. It's interesting because you and I have had this conversation a lot. The Cowboys had significant adversity early. Right. Quarterback goes down. 49ers have had all kinds of adversity this year. Cowboy, I mean, uh, the Eagles, yeah. generally it had none. Here it is. Here's yeah. the adversity. This feels like a level of adversity, but it's still not that high. My guess is if they needed these next two games or any of these next games, oh, yeah. Jalen Hurts would play. Yeah. Yeah. I think that this is a luxury that they've afforded themselves that they can rest them. This, yeah. is, to me, feels like since he finished that game, if they had to have him play like I've separated my shoulder before and I'm certainly not a quarterback put a quarter zone shot in it three days later you're back out practicing and playing I think that Jalen Hurts would follow that same model if they needed him so this still to me doesn't feel like the highest level of adversity that we saw Dak out for multiple weeks in yeah. the 49ers like you mentioned they're down to their third quarterback now I, I agree by the way with what you said though the, the first playoff the divisional weekend January 21st that's a long way yeah. Off. It would be rough to be off that period right. of time and then come right back cold. So I, I do expect that we will see him at some point this regular season. All right. So do we see Jalen Hurts this weekend? I really doubt it. I really and truly doubt it. But we'll have to wait and see where that goes. I've got a lot of work to do in the workshop to get out uh, last bits of stuff here for Christmas to you guys. I appreciate all the support and everything from everybody who have been a part of this channel. We are right around 250 people away from 50,000 subscribers. It's unbelievable to me, and I am so grateful for all of you. Hope everybody has a great day, and I hope everything is wonderful as you get ready for Christmas. Our folks here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report.